Welcome everyone. Good to see everyone. Thank you for coming out. This evening our program is called What's in a Name? And the twin boroughs are small. Oakmont's a little over a square mile and Verona is probably half of that. But even though they're small, they have quite a number of streets, alleys, and neighborhoods. So tonight we're going to talk about all of those little streets, neighbors, neighborhoods, and alleys and give you an idea of how they got their names. So one of the oldest names here is Halton. And Jonathan Halton settled here in 1842. And he settled in between Michael Bright and Caleb Lee along the Allegheny River. And it was very quiet, not much happened here until the year 1852. And that was the year that some surveyors and construction workers showed up and they said to Mr. Halton, we're going to build something called a railroad and it's going to come right across your property. And in addition to that, we're going to put a train station in the middle of your property. So at that point, Mr. Halton changed his profession from farmer to real estate developer. <laughs> because there would now be a little village that would grow up around this new train station. And so he divided his land into separate plots and sold them off. And as a result of this train station, the Halton train station, we had the village of Halton grew up around it. And then there was Halton Road that went to the train station. Shortly afterwards, Mr. Halton opened a ferry, which he called the Halton Ferry. And in 1892, they established a post office in the train station, which they named the Halton Post Office. And when the new bridge came across the river, they named it the Halton Bridge. So if you've been to our programs, you've, I mean, I've told this story uh, many times that in 1889, the residents of Verona's second ward petitioned the state to break away and form their own community. And once the legislatures approved the new community, they had to come up with a name for it. Well, since we had the Halton train station in the village of Halton with the Halton post office and Halton Road and Halton Ferry, it would make sense to name this new town Halton. But there was a group of influential people who lived on the other side of town and they wanted the name Oakmont. And they held a referendum and Halton was the winner. 72 votes for Halton, 28 for Oakmont. However, the people, the opposition crew, were very influential and they had a friend who was a county judge. And so they went to the judge and I don't know if they claimed early voting or absentee ballots or what, but the judge overturned the election and said that the town will be called Oakmont. So as a result of a crooked judge, our town got its name. How did they come up with Oakmont? Glad you asked that. <laughs> As it turned out, one of the leaders of the opposition was a, a gentleman by the name of David McCargo. And he was the superintendent of the Allegheny Valley Railroad. So in that time period, back in the late 19th century, whenever wealthy people had a, a large home, they named it. Vanderbilt's named it, Biltmore. The Fricks called theirs Clayton. We had Hartwood over in Fox Chapel. Well, it just so happened that Mr. McCargo's estate that was located out here was called Oakmont. And that's how he came up with the name. So the name came from Mr. Cargo's estate. So as we said, Oakmont was founded in 1889. It was originally part of Verona. Verona was established in 1871. In 1834, a man named James Verner purchased 400 acres along the Allegheny River, 10 miles up from Pittsburgh. And he had a farm. Well, around the same time that the railroad went to Mr. Halton, they also paid Mr. Verner a visit. And they said, this new railroad is going to go across your property. 
We're going to build a train station on your property too. And since it's on the Werner property, we're going to call that the Werner Station. And they said, in addition to that, we're going to build our rail yards on the level plain at the mouth of Plum Creek along the river. And when we do that, there will be hundreds of people who will come here to work in the rail yards. And your, your farm would be the perfect place to put a little town to house these people. So like Mr. Halton, Mr. Werner retired from farming and went into the real estate de <laughs> development business. And he partnered with the president of the Allegheny Valley Railroad. It was a gentleman by the name of Colonel William Phillips, who was president of the railroad. And the two of them partnered and they laid out this new town. And they named it Verona. And it was a derivation of Werner because of the Werner property. Now, you know, we've heard different stories of how Verona got its name. One of the stories was that it was named Verona for Verona, Italy because there were so many Italian immigrants who came to work in the railroad. But that wasn't true because back in 1870, the workforce primarily was Scotch, Irish, and German. So we didn't see the influx of the, the Italian immigrants until later in the 19th century. So, you know, that wasn't the reason for Verona. We also, it's also been said that Verona was a combination of two train stations, Verona Station and Iona Station. That's how they came up with Verona. But that's not the reason either. We think it was just a derivation of the name Werner. And when they laid out the streets in Verona, they did it very logically. Center Avenue ran right up the center, through the center of town. North Avenue was on the northern side, and South Avenue was on the southern side. And then the cross streets were one through four going up the hill, and it was East Railroad and West Railroad Avenue along the railroad. So it made perfect sense how they laid out their streets. Well, one of the neighborhoods in Verona is known as Sylvan. I'm sure you're all familiar with Sylvan. That's that neighborhood located between the railroad tracks and the river. And how that came about, shortly after Verona was formed, there was a, a judge, his name was Arch Rowand, and he bought all that property down there between the train tracks and the river. And he divided it into 325 lots. He put in three streets, which he named Railroad, Penn, and Arch Street. And he named his new development Iona. And it was sort of a play on Verona. So he had Iona and Verona. Well, the Allegheny Valley Railroad put a small train station there, and it was the Iona Station. However, shortly after they did that, they started to run into confusion between the Verona Station and the Iona Station. Verona, Iona, where are we going? We're going to Verona, we're going to Iona. And there was a lot of confusion back and forth. So at that point, the railroad changed the name of the Iona Station to the Sylvan Station, and when they did that, you started to see the name of the neighborhood evolve to Sylvan, which is what it's known today. So how many people are familiar with Wildwood Avenue in Verona? It's one of the major streets down there, yeah. Do you ever wonder how that got its name? Well, back in 1872, shortly after Verona was established, there was a group of investors, and they purchased what was the Arthur's family farm located in Penn Township. And their idea was they were going to build a planned community there. And it would have broad sweeping streets and schools and parklands. And it was named Wildwood. And so they divided it up into lots and they started to sell lots. However, no one was interested. And it went bankrupt. And this is a drawing, I hope you can see it, of what the community was planned to look like. It had a large park. Uh, along the river, there would be a train station, a school. The lots went from anywhere from a quarter acre to 10 acres. They had everything all planned out. It, there was no interest. But this was about the same time they were naming streets in Verona. And since this new street was going to go to the new town of Wildwood, they decided to name it Wildwood Avenue. However, Wildwood never made it. Uh, it disappeared. However, we still have Wildwood Avenue. 
After they went bankrupt, the property sat vacant for about 20 years. In 1924, it was purchased by a group of investors who planned to build a golf course on it. And two years later, Longview Country Club opened on the property. So if you know where Longview is down there, that was supposed to be the community of Wildwood. One of the oldest names in Oakmont and Verona is Edgewater. That name goes back to the year 1860. John McDonald Crossan, he was a prominent businessman down in Pittsburgh, and he built a large estate out here, which he named Edgewater. Uh, he owned the Monongahela House Hotel, and anybody who was important during that time period stayed at the Monongahela House. Abraham Lincoln stayed there on his way to his inauguration. Charles Dickens was said to have stayed there when he toured America. And a lot of times he would bring famous people out to his estate here in, in, in Oakmont, out to Edgewater. That top left picture is a picture of his house that was located on the property. The Allegheny Valley Railroad built a train station down there, and that's down here on the bottom, which they named the Edgewater Train Station. After Mr. Crossan passed away, the property sold a few times. In 1917, uh, Frank Bell built a steel mill on the property, and since it was a new company and he didn't have a name for it, he chose Edgewater Steel. And that's how Edgewater got its name. Uh, they were in business till the late 90s. In 2001, the factory was torn down and a housing development was built there and it was given the name Edgewater at Oakmont. So that Edgewater name has been with us longer than the community has been here. There is uh, an Edgewater mystery and I've been trying to research this and I, I just can't come up with any answers to this, but on March 1st, 1870, Pennsylvania State Representative by the name of Taylor introduced House Bill number 995 establishing the borough of Edgewater in portions of Penn and Plum Township. The bill passed the House on March 14th, passed the Senate on the following day. An 1870 census of Allegheny County shows the borough of Edgewater with 380 residents, 74 families, and 78 dwellings. One year later, on May 10th, 1871, the State Assembly passed Act Number 649, establishing the Borough of Verona on the same land. So for some reason, they originally were going to call the town Edgewater, and then a year later it was chartered as Verona. So the reason, we know not why. I can't find, I searched, I even went to Harrisburg to see if I could look in the archives and I can find no reference to it other than these uh, articles that appeared in the paper. So even though Oakmont is small, we have quite a few neighborhoods. Morris Estates is located on the other side of Halton Road along the river. That was originally the estate of Lelander Morris. And um, he was a cousin to Andrew Carnegie and he had a summer estate out here, very wealthy in the steel business, and it was really through his efforts that we were able to get this library from Carnegie. But uh, Morris Estates is named for Leander Morris. Uh, we have the fairways up on top of the hill, which has a golf theme. Uh, the streets are Fairways Drive, uh, Marion, and St. Andrews, and that's all the golf being that it's next to Oakmont Country Club. Uh, Edgewater at Oakmont, came from Edgewater Steel and River's Edge, because it's on the edge of the river, they came up with that name. And we also have Oakmont Commons, and that's a British theme. Uh, the streets down there are Canterbury, uh, Greenwich, Gloucester, and New London Lane. So that's how those uh, streets have their names. In 1871, at the time it was a part of Verona, but the streets here in Oakmont were laid out. And what they did, they, they laid out the street grid, and the streets running up the hill were designated with letters, A, B, C, D, E, A through J, all the streets going up the hill. The cross streets, beginning at the river, were 1 through 12 going up the hill. We had East Railroad, 
and West Railroad that ran along the railroad down here. So it was very simple how they, very basic uh, letters and numbers, and that's how they assigned their street names. There was one exception, and that was College Avenue. Reason for that, the original schoolhouse was located on that street, and they called it College Avenue uh, originally when the school was built. And for some reason, whenever they named the streets, they did not assign a letter to that street. They kept it at College, which is what it is today. In 1903, uh, they had a street improvement program, and at that point, they changed the streets running up and down the hill from the letters to the states. And again, no reason to the states that they chose. They weren't in alphabetical order. I don't know how they came up with those states. California, Washington, Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. I really don't know why they chose those states, but those are the ones that, that they chose. So we have a lot of alleys here in town. And the alleys were also, have a way that they were named, uh, they are all named for trees, beginning at the bottom and working their way up the hill. We have ash, beech, cedar, dogwood, elm, fir, gum, hickory, ironwood, juniper, locust, maple, oak, and poplar. There's no K and there's no N. So I don't know if there are any trees that begin with that or not. <laughs> the one interesting one, we have Osage Alley. And it's the alley right behind the library here. It comes down off of 4th Street and makes a turn out on the library place. And I just took it for granted Osage was a type of tree. But so I thought, I better check that before I put my program together. I'm glad I did because Osage is the name of a Native American tribe in western Missouri. So I don't know how they came up with that name for the alley. We've also had some streets that the names were changed. East Railroad, which is right out front, it was originally East Railroad, it was then called Oakmont Avenue, and then in 1938, when the boulevard was completed, it was changed to Allegheny River Boulevard. What's interesting, if you go on the other side of Halton Road, it's still Oakmont Avenue up there. They never changed that. They, it, the boulevard ends at Halton, and then it's, it's Oakmont Avenue up there. Um, Allegheny Avenue on the lower side was known as West Rail, Railroad Avenue. When they changed the boulevard, they changed that to Allegheny Avenue. Plum Street was originally known as Dexter Street. And that's because uh, one of the old factories there was Dexter Spring Works. It was located at 6th and Plum, but that was originally known as Dexter Street. Pennsylvania Avenue from the train tracks to the river was known as Bright Street. And that was because uh, the Michael Bright, the first, found, first settler here in Oakmont, his house was right at the foot of Pennsylvania Avenue, so they named it Bright Street. However, when they laid out this, uh, improved the streets, they changed it to Pennsylvania Avenue. Finally, um, 1897 map shows Dogwood Way, which is located up here. It's listed as Lincoln Street. I don't know how they came up with that, but they changed it to the theme of the trees, so that was changed. We have had streets that are named after people. We have Halton Road, Halton Bridge, and there's a Halton Lane. I don't know if you're familiar with Halton Lane. It's up on the other side of Halton Road, up near 5th Street. Uh, we have, they were named for, of course, Jonathan Halton. Uh, Isabella Street, that was named for Isabella Greer. Uh, she came here in 1856. She was an early settler. Her house is still standing. It's between California and college and fronts Isabella Street. The back is on 4th Street, but that was named for Isabella Greer. Uh, Wade Lane was named for William Wade. You've probably heard of William Wade. He lived in that large white house on Halton Road at 9th Street. Uh, he was the one who was uh, uh, helped Helen Keller. He was one of her benefactors, and she often visited him here at his house. But uh, he owned all that property back where Wade Lane is today. Up above 5th Street, we have Lee Street, which is named for Caleb Lee, who was a landowner up on that end of town. We have Paul Street, who was named for Jacob Paul, who owned Wooding Tool Works, and he was an early leader here 
in Oakmont. We also have Riddle Street, which was named for Harry Riddle, another early leader in Oakmont. And up at the summit, we have Eaton Drive, named for our mayor, Don Eaton. Some of you probably remember Don. He was mayor here, I think, in the 80s, 90s, but they named the street after him. Down at the river's edge, we have Greenwood Street, which is named for Abraham Greenwood. He was Jonathan Halton's son-in-law, and he operated a big hotel up at the corner across from the Halton Station. Uh, James Dazelle, he lived in the house that was the Bradley home. If you remember the Bradley home by the bridge, that was uh, James's house. There is a Dazelle Way. And finally, we have Adeline Brown Way in front of Hofstadt's. Adeline, as you remember, was a long-time borough manager here in town. So as we name streets, I still can't figure out who was Archie and who was Ann. Because we have Archie Street and Ann Street. Could their last name possibly have been Port? We have a Port Street up here. And those three names, we don't know where they came from. Uh, no clue. But uh, And they're old streets too, so uh, they go way back. But. Those are the only three that, that, that don't really make sense whenever they named all the streets. Oakmont is a small community. Its history can be found in the streets, alleys, and neighborhoods of our town. Well, thank you very much.